Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and uh, Happy New Year once again. So again, back to our mock interview series. Today we have one very good candidate. His name is uh, Bhavik. Bhavik, you can uh, start your camera now. So he's uh, having some really good experience in uh, overall automation, having seven plus years of experience. I can see his resume over here and uh, really good exposure on API side and uh, Selenium, Java, TestNG, Cucumber, tested driven development, behavior driven development, nice CI, CD pipeline, overall good testing skills, working as a principal SZ, right, Pavik? Great, yes. so looks good to me. Now, uh, okay, so can you please tell me about yourself, what exactly you're doing in your current company and then your overall uh, testing and test automation experience? Yeah, uh, and I mean, so this is Bavik. Uh, so total I have around seven plus years of experience and that all into QA. So, so mostly I'm inclined towards the automation. Uh, so automation side, if you consider, I have worked on a web uh, API and uh, APM side, uh, mobile phone side, but not in deep much. Uh, then on the web side, I've worked with uh, like uh, multiple framework form BDD type of framework. And on the rest uh, API side, I've worked it with the rest assured framework to automate the APIs for mm -hmm. my company. And uh, on the other side of manual, if we can say, so manual, I think uh, I worked in startups. So I, I, I have been involved in all the phases of uh, SDLC, starting from the requirement gathering, uh, test case planning, designing, execution, defect testing, and all the like stuff or the defect life cycle. So yeah, that's uh, about myself. Okay. So what exactly you're currently are doing like in terms of uh overall because you're working as principal as dead and principal as dead yeah. is the quite you know, the senior profile generally people get principal as dead after nine or ten years yeah so what exactly you're doing like extra just to i mean i really want to know with respect to principal as dead in terms of uh, automation in terms of framework designing what is your roles and responsibilities and contribution in your current project actually correct uh so in my company i was the first automation guy who joined as a in, in QA team. So I have started uh, developing the framework from the scratch around three years ago. Uh, so it's like we okay. have a web application and a mobile application as well. So I have a both uh, framework for both the particular uh, thing. And if I say the principle actually is because I have started the framework and the practice to uh, to introduce the automation inside the QA lifecycle and we can say the, uh, the, uh, the release lifecycle. Uh, that's the major okay uh like you know major uh, role for my profile so because there is no other team members or the leads who is knowing much much about the automation side so i was responsible to do it and I, we have a team also like two people of team uh, they are working with me to contribute and enhancing the framework which we already implemented currently so now a website okay. i we have implemented mm -hmm. framework with uh, like uh, uh, selenium and java for the rest of, for the API side, we have implemented framework for the rest assure, uh, rest APIs, a rest assured framework. And for the mobile side, we have a POC type of thing with APM, which is a like which is the single code on the uh, Android and iOS both. But that's not enhanced much because we need to work on more. But like POC is uh, POC is already completed for the project. So when you join this uh, company or this team, there were no automation process. So how difficult for you it was to implement the automation things and then collecting the data and then justifying that no automation is important for this project. So how exactly you justified those things that automation is needed to the management? Correct. Uh, so when I joined, I hired an automation engineer. When, when, when I joined, and I understand that there is no such process established over here. So first I did the mm -hmm. uh, normal testing, manual testing to understand the application better. Once I understand, I, 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 I saw the pinpoint where the QA team is putting more and more effort about the uh, regression stuff. So I, after two or three months, I, I, uh, I like asked my manager to introduce me automation framework with those particular areas to automate. Because you cannot okay. automate everything in startup. Otherwise it will be very difficult to uh, uh, maintain, right? Because we are pushing code every day, almost every day. So if you do to the automation tomorrow, it's uh, going to change. So we cannot automate everything. So I, I pick areas where the code or the, we can say the uh, functionality is all established and it's not going to change in at least five to six months because of the, we have the business meeting and we understand that it is not going to change. So I, those particular area I picked up and I automated those and I introduced in the regression life cycle. So we, 
get uh, a, a less number of bugs initially, but ultimately it's a practice to send a code with automation only like this. So this process needs a lot of time. I constantly need to involve with the uh, other teams, DevOps and the other teams also, uh, developer team to get the API data, get the, you know, uh, like uh, API docs, something we can say. So that requires a lot of com com like communication with the developers and the other teams also. Yeah. So what is the current state of the automation, especially let's see for the back end, the API you are majorly working upon. So is it like, uh, what is the percentage that you have achieved so far with respect to the manual test cases or uh, the number of use cases scenarios that you have? It's like fully automated yeah. or most of the things that you have automated? Uh, I think we can say we have currently 80% uh, of plus automation for the API, only for the API. For the UI, we are still very less. It's around 30 to 40 percent only, because UI we are changing very frequently. So we are not putting more efforts as of now in UI. It needs more time. Mm -hmm. But API is more than 80 percent automated because uh, APIs are established and already third party. Uh, we can see, we can see our client is already uh, like using those APIs. So anything changes on that uh, those particular area, it needs to be automated and tested very thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell me some important factors <clears throat> for API automation? Like what is the most important thing as a tester point of view that you have to verify for API testing or automation point of view? Okay. So first is like we uh, need to verify a data particularly through the API documents. Mm -hmm. We can see the parameters or whatever the things we are doing. It's exactly matching what the requirements are, right? So we can say uh, if we divide in a part, like we can say the authentication is one of the thing, authorization is one of the thing, uh, then the mm -hmm. input parameters, then the uh, error codes which are mentioned in docs are same and the same messages are coming or not. Then the records or the like, you know, records are creating and uh, like uh, getting the records properly or not, like this type of data we can automate it very uh, particularly. Mm -hmm. So don't you think so because you are saying that you have a lot of uh, integration systems also you are interacting with some other APIs exposing their APIs and they are exposing your APIs and you are consuming uh, their APIs as well. So what about the schema validations because once the schema is yeah. is gone your entire uh, application your backend is down. So what about the schema yeah. validation can you highlight yeah. those areas as so, well. So sure sure so I maybe I forgot to highlight but in our test mm -hmm. case a BDD framework we have a a uh, common step for all the test cases is last step to verify the schema. We have around uh, uh, 10 to 12 entities, JSON entities. For that, I have created the JSON schema, which is already stored in the uh, framework. And at every API, if, I, if we can say I'm just verifying the answer about the uh, customer ID, but I will always verify the customer entity schema. It, it's in every uh, test cases. Schema validation is okay. fully integrated as of now, and I'm using some schema, JSON schema uh, validation, uh, to, uh, they can say third party tool. It is available on GitHub, so I'm not, for I, I forgot the like exact link of it, but yeah. So I'm hmm. using this, those uh, uh, APIs to validate the sch schemas. Okay, so, so you are just directly hitting the API clients, like directly API services through REST Assured or something. So. I'm sure that okay, you guys are having some microservices internally or if you are working on a microservices environment, not on the monolithic. So can you tell me yeah. like uh, the basic architecture of your backend system in your company for your project? Is it monolithic or microservices? Or can you tell me the difference between monolithic and microservices environment? So currently, I don't think we are using microservices because I think we are using monolithic only. So what I know a bit about the microservice is like uh, we are dividing the portion of the system, uh, backend system in, in the small portion of the services. Like one particular system or function is needs to provide this output and the other microservice or other PC or other machine might use this uh, as input and uh, uh, do the function on that particular uh, you know area. So these are independent systems we can say microservices and those all are interconnected in between. So that is basically a microservice, what I understood. Okay. Have you ever used any tool like Pact for uh, proto uh, no. testing or microservices testing, something like that? Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. So how's your experience with Postman? Like you must be using Postman daily routine activities, right? That for your API hitting. Okay. So like yeah. why so do you initially, pick Postman? Uh, 
Okay. Why didn't you pick so postman? Post yeah, go ahead. Go ahead uh, yeah, we can we can use postman. I think it has some testing functionality inbuilt as well. But when I say mm -hmm. uh, the JSON schema validation to do operations on the response, uh, I found it might difficult on postman because we cannot write much code in postman. And second thing is mm -hmm. I am not comfortable as of now as my team also not comfortable with the uh, I think the uh, JS language. So we are comfortable with Java and testing framework or BDD framework. So it's I think the better to go with uh, rest assured. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So can you tell me in API the different levels of authentication? Right. We have different level of authorizations actually. So you have to authenticate your uh, uh, server by using some token or something. So can you tell me like what are the different types of uh, uh, authentication or authorization servers we can establish or uh, authentication we can provide for the APIs. Okay, so uh, we used a uh, basic auth, uh, very simple authentications we can say, and then we use API and the secret key. So for our current project, I think we, we are using API secret key. It is like uh, every client has its own API and secret key they can change as per their requirement or whatever that can be changing uh, like uh, depends on time or their the you know wish and other than that we have a uh, like we don't use uh, oauth 1.0 or 1.2 or 2.0 but i have heard the name of oauth and obviously we can you know automate that as well but i don't have much idea about oauth uh then other than that i think we have that uh bearer token as well i think we can use bearer token uh, we can establish mm -hmm. bearer token as authentication part of the apis also yeah uh yeah these are some of the authentication process we can establish okay but you're using secret key or secret id or certain yeah. things so don't be part of your oauth 1.0 or maybe 2.0 do you know the difference between 1.0 and 2.0 uh 1.0 no i don't know the difference between 1.0 2.0 but what i uh understood mm -hmm. is api secret key might be a different type of authentication which is not included in 1.0 2.0 because when we uh you know like uh expose our, our documents we have clearly mentioned we have authentication type is api plus secret key like this so we pass our parameters api and secret key in the we can say a uh, query params only so the in backend only we as the, we can validate those things not the proper authentication method we, we are using in, through, so through parameters exactly only we are passing. Yeah. Yeah. So through parameters, you are passing your secret key or some authentication token, or maybe some basic hmm. uh, bearer token that you are passing. But how exactly that bearer token is getting generated? Like, are you doing okay. a hard coded value, or let's see in your framework also for uh, hmm. that your bearer token is getting refreshed after 15 minutes or 20 minutes? It will not work next day, or let's see after one hour. So are you using the same mm -hmm. token every time? How exactly are generating those tokens? Okay, so to generate bearer token, we always hit the APIs for a, a login. Mm -hmm. Login or basically basic auth through basic auth with a password and they will get as a, a, a token, bearer token. So this bearer token okay. we use in the other APIs. And the secret key is almost same thing. We have a one more API to get secret and the get APIs, which is particularly mm -hmm. designed. And for the secret, the client can change secret anytime as per his request. So consider a case like the uh, he client thought that the secret is out in the market, someone else is using, and he can just click on button and change the secret key. So from from the, uh, uh, then onwards, the new secret key will come into picture, and that only we will, we will have to use for other APIs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't you think it's uh, the model of OAuth 1.0? If you're um, using secret key. Yeah, reworking might be the it, I guess, yeah, reworking security, correct. Might be the same, but I am not uh like you know like thoroughly uh studied about OAuth 1.0. Okay, but but why are you using BDD? Like you are saying the we are using a BDD uh, process with Cucumber, right? So you guys yeah. are using Cucumber just for the sake of uh, using it, or you are actually implementing the BDD process also in your in your team so first tell me about what do you mean by bdd so it's like uh, how the application behaves mm -hmm. the main fundamental to establish bdd is how application behaves so that other mm -hmm. team like cross-functional teams can easily understand the feature and verify 
the system is working properly or not other than going to the an actual implementation of api because if i say the cross functional team is like pm team or business team just want to understand how api works how response looks so other than going them by establishing things on their own it is just hmm. see the reports and see the cocomber report they can understand those features that's the main uh, agenda to implement the bdd but to be very honest we we cannot say a pm team or some other cross functional team is using as of now our framework so uh, but the hmm. Uh, team in the in the dev or we can say tech team yeah completely uh, depends on that bdd because they actually uh, see the feature we discuss the feature and then only we start automation yeah great so do you understand three amigos we use this term in bdd right we have po qa and the dev team they're working together to yeah. create these files using the gherkin Correct. keywords and everything so yeah who is writing these feature files so you are writing or your uh, team your qa team is writing or everyone is contributing for that so i am the writing i am only writing but thing is before we discuss everything but yeah i i honestly if i say i will exclude the pm team as of now or the product team as of now because they're not much involved in the hmm. feature wise but the dev the lead or the engineering lead and the qa lead and we all sit together to decide the feature so that time uh, we okay. discuss everything yeah but not with the po because uh, why not yeah. po is involved uh i think they uh they just look i don't know the process of the why they're not involved but thing is they are more focused on the user request or user feature stories on the providing they're not much involved in the technical part as of now great okay then why cucumber why are you using uh, cucumber? okay so okay so uh, the very straightforward answer is I am only working on this team, right? Mm. So I always look for open source thing and which tool has a very wide, mm. you know, people using it. Because if I got stuck somewhere, I need people to answer me, which is not not having mm. in my team. I need to look for open uh, like something like Stack Overflow, GitHub, anything. So I realized that a lot of people using Cucumber rather than other uh, BDD tools like JB or something. That's why I use Cucumber. Mm. Uh, because my framework, I, I'm not sure that J, JBA works properly, not it might work properly, but just to get a wider uh, experience of the people, I use the Cucumber. Okay, so can you tell me the full tech stack of your uh, REST API framework that you have written? Complete uh, technology stack, what different tools, libraries, third party libraries that you are writing, that you are using? So you, okay, so you mean to say, should I tell about the, uh, a framework structure or just a text of the libraries text stack about your automation framework what are the different libraries that you are using oh say so we can say the maven for basically the build tool then mm -hmm. uh, cucumber for the bdd to, uh, bdd thing java is a language of basically try to code then mm -hmm. uh pom is for ui not the api but rest assured for, for the api uh, then uh, one is uh, 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 that's Google uh, library, I think. Uh, uh, JSON or uh, I don't know to to to, to convert basically from the Java object to JSON file or JSON object to Java file. It's a, a JSON library, yeah, JSON. It's Google's library, I guess. Which uh, then Google. yeah, okay, yeah, go Google ahead. Google JSON and. Then I think one one is for the JSON schema uh, validation. Basically, uh, I don't know the mm -hmm. name, but there is a open source library for the JSON schema validation. Validation. Uh, then yeah, uh, that assert library, but that is also I think part of the J unit only, or maybe just in general. Yeah, assert library. So you're using uh, Cucumber then, with J unit, or, uh, Cucumber with J, J unit, unit or J unit? J unit. Okay. J unit. Okay. Okay. Uh, then yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. For reporting, I think I'm. Yeah, mm -hmm. reporting. I'm using the, uh, not extend report at all. I'm using the internal report only. So, uh, Cucumber has a plugin. Uh, Cucumber HTML report something. I'm using those report as of now. For UI, we used uh extend report for some part, but not now because mm -hmm. I think the Jenkins integration is very much easier with this uh particular you know uh report it is very easy to integrate in jenkins so anyone can just go in jenkins and use this report or uh, like see this report 
that's why used this coco maintenance report uh okay. yes are you yeah, are you generating any yeah uh logs right mm -hmm. uh so i uh so no i do i'm not using any log 4g or any library because i used to write a print statement or mm -hmm. the response everything in uh you know the uh Kumba report only so everyone can see it properly and for log of the api the rest assures a uh, 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 log function is there so i use the same thing for good. api okay good so tell me one thing for example let's see there is a post call i want to create a user right and to create a user i have very a complex json payload for example that uh, the basic information about the user and user company information also user personal details also that is again personal details in an array company information is another array and user first name last name is in the directly in the user object like that so likewise i have couple of json array or json objects like that so how do you pass this uh, the payload the request payload with the post call and so that you will get the response that okay user created successfully and then the response also you are getting a complete json object that this user got created successfully and then you have to automate this with rest assured so how will you do that what will be your approach uh so i think when you say we have a lot of data inside a payload so i am i am like thinking that you cannot pass or change data every time for every request right you must be passing some changing some data at some uh, test for prospect right for some api so i i, I use that uh, like a builder design pattern in which i have already created a basic a class of all the parameters and i have predefined value already in that now on the passing side whenever i want to change some parameter i just use the uh, dot uh, 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 set name or set id hmm. something like this and change those five or six parameter i just pass those full or payload into the uh, like uh, rest assured call and when i'm i'm getting okay. uh, response i use the same uh, thing in a reverse i just compare i uh, extract the basically the response and i get the uh, value with the that class java class which i created for the uh, that inputting the data like this so we, we have one uh, one call which is transaction call it has multiple parameters it has a uh, uh, like lot of parameters but you cannot change everything at every time right so rather than putting uh you know uh, a call in string or json file i used in a, a, a this pattern builder design pattern so in the constructor only i put all the uh, default values in parameters and whenever i'm just want to change i just change from outside the test classes okay so you are saying that whenever you want to change you have some getter and setters are available and then you just set the values yes. and while fetching the response also you again convert that json to the poso classes and uh, then you yeah. get it and then you validate it uh yeah we can say but in the response i don't think that we need to con or check each and everything so the values which i changed mm -hmm. earlier in setters i used mm -hmm. to get the same so i just get a response at, like extracting the response and then also i can do it so that will be like lesser work to converting poso again like this okay so you are not converting the poso again you are just checking the response to some json parser yeah to json parser it's a research should has it in built json parser methods i use that only mm -hmm. but yeah if sometime if a lot many complex then maybe i can use the poso again to like reuse the poso mm -hmm. and so don't you think that you should get the J complete json object and then convert that into poso now you have two poso one is that you actually created while sending the request and now you have response poso and then you check both getter and getter together that yeah. will be more easy to do that then you can have n number of uh, validations you can write it instead of uh, you know writing the json parsers what do you think about yeah. this approach so obviously the second first approach which you tell about the comparing two pojos are definitely a good approach but when i tell you uh, i don't validate each and every field every time right if i say mm -hmm. i change the customer name i want to just check customer name for particular field so that's for single field i don't i don't think that it makes a lot of sense to convert here again but yeah if the requirement comes to check each and every field then yeah the we need to create again mm -hmm. the another pojo class okay that's a good answer so tell me one thing can i pass 
a JSON request payload with the get call. Can I do that? Uh, no, I think because you don't have any way to pass payload in case. Uh, about it. One thing. It's a get call. Yeah. Only we pass the request payload with a JSON, right? In the Postman also that you do it. But can we do the, I'm not talking about with respect to Postman, but can we do the get API call with a request payload as a body? That's, I am not did this, but uh, I think you can. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. You okay. can, but uh, and no, it is not required. Or it's not required, but you can pass because it will not give you the error, I guess, unless and until it is hard coded from backend. Then that means, means uh, particularly checked by backend that if the get call mm -hmm. has the response, then we should give the error. If it is not that, then it is it is okay, I guess. Okay, so you can say that it. I can do it, but it's not recommended. Yeah, recommended. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now, what is the difference between post and put? Okay, I'm so, expecting some uh, good practical answer between what is actually the meaning of post and put. How do you consider that? So post is to always create a new record where put is basically to create a new or if it is already there, then it will just update the existing record. So if we say practically, if we say if you are generating the IDs or something from the from the like your website or from the basically application side, so you have the ID now. Now you need to get uh, you need to call with that ID. If that ID is existing in DB, that it will automatically update with the JSON payload. And if it is not hmm. present present in the DB, then it will create uh, the new record with that ID. And with the data which you sent with the JSON payload. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Uh, you are saying that with the put call, I can create a entity also if the unique ID is not available. Is it true? Yeah, you can create a new record your entity also. Okay. So for example, let's say I'll give you one more scenario. You have to create a user, then you have to update the same user, and then you have to get the same user. And then you have to delete that just like a typical CRUD operation for the same user. So the, in automation, okay. how will you define this scenario so that you don't need to write some boilerplate code again and again, and then uh, you don't need to maintain too much amount of test data also. How we automate this complete end to end CRUD operation. Okay. So first thing is you when you say a user, uh, right? So you have you must have a user entity with you, which has some particular parameters. So I'll create one JSON uh, object of it, and I convert in the particular user object, Java object, and then I mm -hmm. uh, first is to create. So first create, I, I make a post call with the same object uh, when I don't have a ID particularly. Now in the first operation, I get the response. I just extract the particular ID. Obviously the the, we need to verify also for the rest, uh, the rest call. Maybe we will verify. But for another call, I just extract the ID, and uh, mm -hmm. I will define the uh, base uh, endpoint in some variable, and just uh, we can say a path param will changing or the particular endpoint will change based on the request. So if you say get uh, get call first call, the endpoint uh, mm -hmm. endpoint is already defined. But the the after the forward slash, if we can say the customer, it will create like this. Okay. So the put has mm -hmm. particularly slash with the path param as well. So in the second call, I will just put as put as a like a variable in which the input comes from the first call, output of first call, like this. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the okay, create uh, the new tool to uh, update, right? So I have updated with the put call. Then I use the same ID which is defined earlier to uh, get mm -hmm. the customer. And then I use this again same ID to delete particular customer. And every everything every operation has a global variable of the endpoint. Or we can say base mm -hmm. uh, URL, and the only mm -hmm. the after after forward slash we can just parameterize depends on the request. So you are saying first it will be <coughs> post call, then you get it, get the ID, then with the mm -hmm. same ID you will verify the user got created or not with the get call. Yes. Then Pass the same ID to the put call to update the user. Again, validate with yes. the get call that user updated or not. 
right okay huh? and then again delete it and then again get it just to check the user got deleted or not uh yes i think yeah Okay, so when you delete it, what is the response code you will be getting from the server? So uh, if I delete it and if I, uh, I make a call to get user, right? That's what you're asking. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, 403 not found or 404 not found, something like this. I don't know the exact code, but there is a, a not found code, I guess. Not found. What is the code for not found? The HTTP status code for not found. Uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, I know the four series will be there, but I'm not sure about the four zero three or four zero four something. Mm -hmm. Okay. When will you get four zero one? Four zero one is for unauthorized. Okay. When you get uh, two hundred. It's okay request. Yeah. The response has like the request has been accepted by the server. Okay. What do you mean by 201? It's a, to create a new record. When you say post call, uh, if the record is newly created in the DB or server side, it will give us the hmm. 201. Okay. What about 500? Uh, it's, I think, the client side errors. So 500 is basically internal server error, which is a, a common error for all the type catch, like catch functionalities. If the exception happens on the backend side, they will give mm. us a 500 error. And uh, one more is 503, which is a uh, service unavailable. So backend is not responding mm. properly. That time we get a 503. Uh, and there are some more also. Five. So you get, uh, so what is the response yeah. code when you hit Let's see, there is a post call, but by mistake, you are sending with a get call. So what is yeah, the response? Yeah, it's method not the... found. Yeah, it's method mm -hmm. not found call. Uh, but I don't know the code. It is also a four series, maybe the 405, 404. I'm not sure the code exactly. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> no worries. Okay, fine. Just check 405 one more time. Okay, Later sure, on. 405. Sure. Good. Okay, so tell me one thing. What is do you understand synchronized APIs or asynchronization of the APIs? Do you understand these terms? Uh, no, sorry, I mm -hmm. don't know. I'm not. What is, what is so? Let's see. For example, there is one. Uh, I have to execute one scenario. You are hitting this API, and this API is hitting one more API, and this API is hitting yeah. one more API. Back it's a cascaded style kind of API. Yes, yeah, correct. Right. And when you hit this yeah. API, might be possible this API is hitting multiple APIs. So mm. rest assured by using rest assured or any other uh don't you think that okay, it will be a sync? Because first, let's see, for example, you want to get the audit details from the e-commerce application for a specific user. Mm. So first get the user API, then order API, then product API, then category API, like that. Or it is an asynchronous mm. call or is a synchronous call. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I think to get all data, I think we should uh, get a call for a synchronous call. But after getting mm -hmm. every API's data, only we can go with the next API. So it mm. has to be a synchronous call. Yeah. But when you say uh, the one API has and the it is calling multiple APIs, which is not dependent on the output of like previous API or something, then we can use the uh, asynchronous APIs because it's just to like uh, you know like uh you can say that to hit and just sit back like this you don't expect something or we cannot or uh, do perform more actions on it based on it, that we can use uh, asynchronous api okay so tell me one thing for example you are hitting the api and then you are getting let's say user api or any order api and you are getting so much amount of data from the server that you really don't need that you just unnecessary 100 json attributes that you are getting in the form of response when you are using the typical APIs. But I want only the specific uh, data out of 100. I want only five JSON objects about basic information about the user. So how will you solve this problem? Like which design you will perform? I'm not talking about in terms of automation, but uh, which uh, service architecture you will be using here 
would you use like same microservices or api rest api concept rest api architecture or some other thing you will be using okay uh... for example so, there is a yeah there is a blogging application right let's say you want to see the blogs written by Naveen automation labs but you just want only the five blocks out of 100 blocks and uh, you just want okay the basic information like the block title and the description and that's it you don't want unnecessary other 10 or 20 attributes from the server so how will you design this or which design you will prefer for the backend side so uh, i think are you talking about the like uh, 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 elastic search something like this if you want to search particular thing from the whole response or maybe expecting something else because in elastic search no. we have to query okay yeah go ahead go ahead hmm. so yeah elastic search we have a particular we can query on the records and we can get those hmm. particular records only so that is mm -hmm. what i understood from the your question yeah but if you say the entities in between like particular keys in the full object uh hmm. yeah I'm because for sure. elastic search also yeah. for elastic search also it has to call the api so finally you are getting 100 and then yeah. you are filtering it out with the elastic search and then getting a response to the client my question is that okay server it will give you five objects instead of 100 objects got it got, got your point got your point uh, have you ever heard about graphql apis uh no graphql i have used that one uh, a neo 4j uh, api which is no 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 sql debug db but it is uh just pure type of thing just they have a one driver exposed for java language to hit the api and get the response but that's also the same thing i think do we need to query the neo 4j mm -hmm. or in parameters and then we can hit the this to mm -hmm. that uh, driver and we get the response like this but yeah this graph tool i have never used okay no worries that's okay so uh i'll share one uh, link with you Bavik. uh you just access yeah. i'm in the chat you just access that so my screen is visible right ah uh, yes okay so i'm writing hi you will see that yes yeah, i can see right it. okay great so the thing is uh, okay i'm writing over here so for example let's see i have a uh, you know uh, there is a drop down okay on my mm -hmm. web application this drop down but there is no select class tag this is no select tag actually okay no html tag with the select tag a simple drop down is there mm -hmm. right so what you just need to do is that uh, you have to automate this and let's see this is the country drop down and then you have to select from this country drop down you have to select india and then you have to verify that okay yeah india successfully selected or not so just write the basic code you don't need to write the web driver driver equal to this for example driver is already pointing to the chrome driver so how do you automate this so if you say you don't have a select tag inside it so i think you have a, a list something right you must have a list in the dom structure ul and yeah. li so structure right exactly so let's see this is a parent tag and then under that we have number of li's are available like this li number one li number two li number three so n number of li's are available and every li for example having one uh, for example a tag and a tag is having some country for example usa and then yes. this uh, a right. tag is closed over here like this same thing for this second li third li so somewhere you will find this a with india also and then a caught close over here so your target is that you have to select india out of 100 li's like this so you can write your code here after this just sure. simple give me that what will be your approach to automate this okay so first i'll find the yes, this ul tag inside the dom it must be with anything mm -hmm. about the uh you know x or something there's a fire find mm -hmm. and you will actually hitting the ul over here it may be id or anything right uh okay. then in this ul i'll get this uh web elements mm -hmm. uh, least i will get all the child element of ul which is uh, of li so if i say mm -hmm. li is equal to driver dot find 
and something x path is like a uh, uh, ul sorry an element so like elements and ul mm -hmm. or uh, slash ally like this i can get all okay. the uh, allies inside a list uh, then i will mm -hmm. iterate uh, through this list so they say for each loop i can use mm -hmm. uh, so for if here and uh, web element element e, e is equal to i think uh, this list okay then inside loop i'll iterate uh, after one after another you know list and i'll get so i have the expected output with me text is india right so i'll mm -hmm. get x path not x path anything about the uh, ally to find the get text out of it so if i use element e so e, if uh, e dot get text mm -hmm. Uh, equals ignore this case we can say uh, India we have right already as a output expected mm -hmm. output we can say we can store it somewhere in the variable also but yeah this thing and when mm -hmm. I got it I just have to click on it to select it basically so uh, in that case I'll e dot click mm -hmm. like this and uh, yeah that's how we can select India out of it okay but for example let's see after india so let me increase the list okay so let's see with different countries we have country mm. a country uh, c country like that okay mm. Mm. so like this we have right mm. so you are clicking in india india got selected so why do you want to go to a country c country dd country so up, up to let's say 100 countries are available okay. like that yeah, I got it. So I should have a break over here also. So we can just mm -hmm. look, break the loop if I got the India as output. Hmm. But let's see, India is available on out of 100. Let's see, India position is available on 51st position. So your loop will mm -hmm. start from 1 to 51st. At least 51 time your uh, loop will start, right? Yes, yes. So got it. Can you, can you improve this instead of writing a for loop storing? So this approach is perfect, fine. No doubt about it. You are storing inside mm -hmm. the list of element, and it's a list list of element, and then uh, iterating it, then clicking and breaking. What else? Got it. Got it. Oh, uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I can use a map over here, where I will use map of element and uh, get text, which is string. So mm -hmm. I can. Okay, I can get all the elements together without, uh, you know, going through the loop. Just get all the elements together, and. Uh, like the map will be web element uh and a string which is basically to get a uh, text of the element now i just need to find a value which is uh same as india so map collection has inbuilt method i guess to find value okay. so that to we can use the, but to store all the elements inside the web inside the map again you have to iterate it how will you store all these web elements comma the respective text in this particular map how will you do that i can use this list function only right i just directly add list over here okay okay sorry i got it so this is a one element yeah mm, how do i use this so we can like think of a set or sorting purpose but uh, in the search functionality will come into picture mm, what else we can do so what if we can try something like directly writing the xpath just open the drop down and uh, because when you open the drop down the dom also will be updated with the all the list and you why don't you hit india directly with the xpath yeah that uh, also uh, right but yeah i was yeah correct i think the select has the select by value directly so i can do this direct xpath also over here with hard coded value in xpath only which can no, parameterize later. No, this is not a select tag. So you cannot use select by tag name or sorry, select by visible text. This yeah. is not a select tag. What I'm talking about, don't you think that <clears throat> we can directly write India with the LIA text is equal to India. So you open this drop down and then write the export for India directly and dot click. Yeah, I think you're talking about this something like this, right? Yeah. This is the export maybe and then we can get the yeah that mm. also we can do but uh i think the, the one issue might happen is like the if you have hundreds of uh, parameters that might not visible in the list 
and the visible mm-hmm. area of the selenium maybe the dome structure mm-hmm. so i mm-hmm. think directly finding x path might be difficult or not not the we can uh, click on it but through this i can we can directly click on it because we get the element already through the iterate hmm so which one is better option uh, the approach that you told me that with the for loop or the approach of using this one so ah uh, okay so i think you your expectation is to select india only so maybe the x path will be better uh might be better but if you say so to more if you want to see the third country fourth country and something like this that may might be the for a follow will be better approach because we have you know authority like we have uh, ability to do a play around this like whatever you want to do where in you this can, approach we have a limited scope as a no that you can do is over yeah, here like four or pass. something yeah you can pass something better over here something. and then uh, no you just need to pass, don't you don't need to pass li4 or something you just need to pass a tax equal to usa or uk or brazil or whatever you can yeah. create a function and pa- function oh, pass yeah. a parameter over here correct correct uh mm-hmm. yeah i think these both are the same up yeah so i think okay. next no. part will be much faster than yeah okay no worries that's perfect no worries so let me just remove this thing from here okay now for example let's say i'll open one application just let me know if you're able to see that okay i think uh, okay that's fine no worries so let's see i have a web table fine hmm in this particular web table uh, the first column is a checkbox then the second column is the name for example let's see uh, bhavik then your number is there and the right so this is the first column second column and then your email id is there test at the rate gmail.com something like this and then your company name for example ibm randomly that i'm writing so likewise you have multiple rows here like this this is a web table and we have different names are available okay any name it could be different names are available like this you have to select for example let's see uh, bhavik this bhavik can come in this particular web table anywhere maybe it's a first position maybe the last position or bhavik is not available at all and then there is a pagination yeah. also here right so let's see in the first time the web table can have the 10 records on the first page then what you have to do you have to click on first then second then third and fourth like this and then keep clicking on next 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 like this and then let's see you have around 25 pages are available so can you write a generic solution that if i pass any data let's see for bhavik and then it should select the checkbox for this and it should give me the details like the phone number for that user uh, bhavik your camera is off oh oh i'm getting sorry yeah, yeah. hi so did you get yeah 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 i got your question so i need to search a bhavik based on the input and i need to give you like i need to check the chat box and give you the other details of the particular customer bhavik right hmm. so this bhavik can can come hmm. this record can come on any page maybe on fourth page yes. or the last page or the bhavik is not at all available also hmm. and you have to write a, i got it you have to write one generic or you have to write one generic function because the data could be anything hmm. tomorrow it can be naveen also so let's see this is for naveen here it could be naveen also yeah any any you yes yes got your point so it is uh, before i can go to the solution i guess i want to ask that we have a predefined value of of, of uh, like uh, pages count 25 pages predefined or it can be anything okay, depends on the search depends on the search but for example let's see the 25 is there or you just forget about 25 it's dynamic in nature okay dynamic in nature mm-hmm. so there will be a three case the bhavik will find in a two case bhavik can found and cannot found right that also we need to consider if it is not found we need to give some data, some error right yeah yeah error means it should give you a message that okay. data not found something we take yeah 
string name we can have a common function over here in which uh, mm -hmm. this is, uh, first we'll find the uh, table element so driver dot find and something uh, we must be able to find the table with some id or something right so we can say the table mm -hmm. we can found uh and then we can uh, found the tdtr thing in which td mm -hmm. okay okay i think we can write the same approach as we discussed last time there is like a direct x path to find the bobic in the first page right so mm -hmm. so it's like uh, we can say slash uh td tr and dot okay. uh sorry yeah go ahead go ahead please yeah so here uh but tr is defined as a zero one only right because we know the column is first column so it could be one only and dot get text we can find sorry, not get at text we have also we can uh find the uh, x path with text so we can write x path like this something uh, name over here which we inputted by the in the params mm -hmm. okay now if we don't if a size is zero if you don't find element of is this right uh size less than zero or something then we so go for the next page so we yeah so uh so why tr1 tr1 means you are pointing to the first row uh oh sorry i think this confused about the column i think i wanted to find a first column so it might be the so it should be uh, td1 or tr1 okay so it would td1 right so i i just forgot okay. the td yeah yeah so td1 so i because i want to uh, focus on the first column i don't want to search the name only right so mm -hmm. i can do this and uh once i get okay first case is i get element over here right i just consider the first case get element i found the result it should be less now than zero get it should be uh so size is not zero it should be greater than zero if consider if if over here uh greater than zero mm -hmm. then we can we, we got the result right we can over here and we mm -hmm. write else portion over here in which the result won't uh, we can consider logic over the next page thing that we'll discuss later okay now if i get element now i got this particular thing i need to traverse x path uh so once I get element, I need to traverse from this element to other, uh, we can say TD of the same TR. So in that, how do I do? I can do the. Uh, Bob, uh, your voice is a little breaking actually. Okay. So quickly. So once so I get the element. My question uh, here is that let's see the Bhav. How will you select the checkbox of Bhavik? So we, I will go the parent uh, row basically the row of the particular column with tr and then i'll set the uh, uh, td of zero like this td of zero i'll get from the parent element and then other element also i can get it from the td of for the same tr td of two td of three td of four like this but tr will be remain same as i got the element from the particular Mavic row here so like this you because but wait um you are pointing to Bhavik, which is td1 so how will you jump from mm -hmm. here to here to td0 because they yeah. in the dom I... they both are parallel right this is hmm. and this is td so this is let's okay. say for example this is my tr the first row and uh, this is my td number one and then this is my td number two this is my td number three like this yeah in the dom I, so I got your how do you jump from this td to this td yeah so we use that following sibling and uh, uh, preceding sibling preceding sibling mm -hmm. for the td0 to get a checkbox i can try write uh syntax for the same so consider like this uh i'm writing over here and uh consider like this following sibling something like this and i have a uh, td over here which is uh so I, I'll following from this element. Just, so this both okay. So the, the checkbox we use not the following for checkbox we use the like a preceding sibling 
for other three uh, columns we used following sibling okay so yeah continue yeah. from here uh, can I... correct so uh, when i when we go to the next uh, else portion when we didn't get the result on the first page i should be verifying the next is clickable not over here so i find the element with next and we use the web driver bait to verify the is clickable or not so it is like uh, so there is a method obviously right that uh, until element is clickable not like this um or get the okay, same text. I got, okay i got your yeah. uh, got and, your solution so i'll ask one more thing here that uh, why are you writing a normal a for loop and everything in selenium 4 we have a, a good feature right obviously you have to write a for loop for for the pagination but why do you want to go with the following sibling a preceding sibling approach have you ever heard about the relative locators in selenium 4 yeah so i heard about the relative locators uh, so I have mm -hmm. attended some, you know, conference on Selenium 4, but I haven't used as of now those particular, uh, you know, new concepts in Selenium 4. Okay, fine, sure, no worries. Uh, can you start your camera as well? So yeah. let me just uh, stop the screen. So tell me quickly about uh, uh, what are new features implemented in Selenium 4 other than this relative locator? Do you have any idea about it? Have you experimented anything? So I didn't experiment it as of now, but what I have uh, learned and uh, you know attended seminar and understood is there are some features called like a request interception, which is now included in Selenium 4, which I was used to do it with the different tools, which is something like uh, mm -hmm. box suite I used the, for request interception. Now it is included in, G, uh, in the Selenium 4, which is a great, I think. Uh, then we have a uh, some new feature in Selenium Grid, but I I have not comfortable like not sure about those. And apart mm -hmm. from it, we have a, a log functionality which is included in Selenium Four, uh, which was not earlier is there. So log is there to log the maybe the data or print something. Uh, apart from it, uh, I think yeah, those are the new features I have, you know, oh. like gone through as of now. Okay, fine. So. For example, let's say I'll give you one more scenario with respect to Selenium only that uh, do you understand SVG element or shadow DOM elements? So SVG element, I uh, know about the mm -hmm. images for the, we use SVG element, I guess, yeah. So can we write the CSS selector for SVG element? Can we write CSS selector? Uh, no, I'm not sure for this. And uh, I have integrated with SVG element, but with the link only, the link text, the text part. Okay, fine. What about shadow DOM element? Uh, no, I do no idea about it. So I have heard maybe okay. sometime, but I have not found it yet. Okay, no worries. Fine. Okay, can we automate uh, Canvas? let's see there is a google map and uh, i want to automate canvas it's available in the canvas html5 html dom can we automate that uh, canvas although it's a, a rare scenario but still i really want to automate can we automate that so i have not idea about the canvas uh, canvas functionality or maybe the structure of that so I am not sure mm -hmm. to give answer on it. Okay, sure. So no I'm not explored the what is canvas and how it is designed in DOM. So that's why. Okay, okay. Can you give me the idea about uh, web driver API architecture with respect to Java? That what are different important uh, interfaces in the classes in the hierarchy is available? Like which class is implementing what? Which interface is extending which interface like that? Yeah. So uh, we'll talk about the like web driver is an interface uh, and mm -hmm. it is implemented by the we can say remote uh, uh, web driver which is a class mm -hmm. which is like it implemented uh, web driver now depends on the browser drivers because we can say if you consider a Chrome driver Chrome browser example we have a Chrome mm -hmm. uh, like Chromium class is there mm -hmm. which which is extended by the uh, which, which which is which extended the uh, remote web driver 
and the chrome browser class extend the uh, uh, the like a uh, chromium class like this so web driver remote web driver chromium and chrome browser like this we have a hierarchy in the selenium okay and then we have one more parent interface of web driver can you tell me which interface is there uh, uh one second i it is search context or something uh, the search context is there right yeah search content yeah, yeah search content okay right. so we always write web driver driver equal to new chrome driver what is the reason behind that why do we write this line we can directly write chrome driver driver equal to new chrome driver also yeah we can write but to reference other driver i think we need to create a new new uh, new uh, variable every time for different type of driver so rather than uh, doing it differently let's just put it on a common like a uh, simple way like the same variable can be used by any of the uh, like browsers that's why we use a web driver driver okay okay but uh... Tell me one thing that which concept it is according to Java, where we write web driver driver equal to new Chrome driver. What uh, kind it of is casting? A type casting? It's a casting of a um, what type of casting? I think it's how would I say? I know it's casting. We are casting the Java or uh, like Chrome driver object to the web driver interface. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what is called actually. Uh, I think you're telling about the unbinding. Mm something like this but don't, have you ever heard about top casting top casting top casting uh, so, so yeah top casting yeah we can we say up casting right and then top casting as well yeah so got it mm -hmm. if it is a uh, if it is immediate parent class it is it might be called as up casting but if the top in hierarchy we can t tell it's a top casting right mm, okay we'll talk about it okay so yeah Tell me one thing. Can I create the object of interface? Uh, no, you cannot. Okay, but can I have the can I have the static abstract method in interface? Static abstract method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, I think can uh, I have all the... the methods are. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Yes, I think all the methods are basically abstract only in the interface. Okay, but with those abstract method, can I use a static keyword? And you, you you not need to use because it's already a static by defined. Are you sure? Static. Uh, okay. Can we override? Can we override the static method? Yes, you can override static method. Yes, you can. Are you sure? Can we override the static method from? Parent class to child class. Okay, okay. I, I sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. So the static methods cannot be override because it's a uh, like a uh, one time, uh, you know, creating for the one time and it uh, implementation of it can be same across the uh, project. Uh, that's the reason I think we cannot create, we cannot call static or the interface method because we need to override the interface method in the child class, right? So we cannot create static method in interface. It is final method, uh, so not final, but the keywords, of the, the, we can say, uh, variables are final by default in interface. Okay. Okay. So after JDK 1.8, there are two major changes happened in the interface in Java. Can you tell me those uh, changes? Yeah, one I heard about the same thing which you told that we can now create uh, object of interface uh, after JDK 1.8 uh but i'm sure? not sure if it is so now i no, i am not sure yeah so i don't know about one, after 1.88 1. what major changes happen okay no worries can you create the object of abstract classes no we cannot create a uh, object of abstract abstract classes but can i create the constructor of abstract classes Structure of abstract class. Uh, yes, you can, but that is, I think there is no need to create constructor of abstract class. It is not going to use anywhere. Because no, it's not but... using the. Mm -hmm. It's so not saying we can object of. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hmm. So if you're not creating an object of the class, I think the constructor is never going to call, right? So uh, hmm. that is why it's not no no need to create constructor. So you are saying that uh, we cannot create the object of abstract class. So hence the constructor will never be called because constructor is always called when you create the object of the class, right? Yes, yes, yes. Are you sure that then? But it's still like I say I can create the object. I can create the constructor of the abstract class. It is allowed or not? Uh, no, I haven't tried as of now. So no. No worries. Okay, fine. So which keyword is used in Java to prevent the method overriding and inheritance? Uh, Bhavesh, your camera Final. is slightly. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay. So, final keyword, right? It's a final to I think prevent overriding okay. and inheritance. Yeah. Okay. So, can you tell me the more about the finally uh, keyword and uh, the practical what example of finally keyword or finally block actually? Yeah. So finally, we use the try catch uh, of family. So in this, we can have mm -hmm. a if we can say one of we have a try and we, we have multiple catch and then we have a, like one or last we call the this keyword finally so in finally we used to have a function that is like the we can we need to uh, a close connection so we need to unbinding something that's that's time we finally keyword because if uh, it's like either or approach if you if you are going to try and if you find any exception it will go to going to the end of the catch blocks but finally, will always be exec uh, executed. The, uh, like mm -hmm. irrespective of it is catching or it is exceptions are like you know coming or not. So that's why we use finally keyword for ending the process or maybe some end. Uh, we can say the functions which is irrespective of tie and catch functionalities. Okay. So tell me quickly that like, uh, why we say strings are immutables. What does it mean? So because we cannot uh, like. Uh, Change the object of string, so it is once it created in the memory, it will be adding stored, and we cannot change it. We cannot create new object with different a different uh, thing, but the existing object will be even same. That's why it's in, uh, uh, immutable. So where exactly strings will be stored inside the memory, inside the heap, inside the stack, or somewhere else? It's in heap memory. Uh, in, in, in heap, if we have a different uh, section of a st string storing, is a String memory or some other I forgot the name of the block of memory in which it is storing. Yeah. Okay. So and where exactly the static variable will be stored or static method will be stored? Static method also will be stored in the heap only. And uh, no, okay, the method will always be stored in the uh, like stack memory and it will be run or uh, can be run by the like when the program starts like this. Yeah, static will be always stored in the stack mm -hmm. memory. So that is, are you sure stack memory? So there is a specific area called in Java memory. What does it? Uh, like? uh, meta space or something like this? Meta space. No, I haven't heard about meta space, but I know one space in the heap memory also, which is used for the string thing. But uh, no, I haven't heard about the meta space. Okay, no worries, fine. Okay, so one last question from my side that uh, um, are you guys uh, using any Jenkins or uh, which source code management tool that you are using? Let's see for, are you using Git for that or what? Yeah, so we are using Git for source code management and Jenkins for the CICD pipeline. So currently our, our project is integrated with Jenkins, uh, but it's not hmm. the like, integrated with the actual pipeline of the with, with the code push or something happened but it's different pipeline of qa cycle only which the build triggers every day for some particular time yeah so can you tell me the git pr process quickly like how exactly you're doing let's see i'm working with you i have written some code and then uh, you have written some code and you want to review it by me using git so can you tell me the pr process of git okay so first i will create a new branch 
uh, from my with existing repository and then i'll i'll change my code over there once so tell me, uh, i'll get quickly tell, me the, quickly tell me all the commands also quickly like no need to take much time just tell me yeah. that, okay how will you create a which command you will be using so it's a git uh, git checkout branch which a particular branch name and uh, then i will uh, i will write my code over there and then i will push the code git push so first i'll uh, yeah git push or git git uh, commit first the changes which i did then git push mm -hmm. the particular branch name origin branch name and then i'll create a pull request to the branch which we wanted to merge it is like uh, we have a mm -hmm. git uh, in the git uh, dashboard we have op to option to create a pull request and we have to mm -hmm. uh, we have our options to select a branch from which to want to which uh, like which branch to which branch want to merge like this so that pr i will raise and then i will send you the pr id or pr link and then you will uh, as a code reviewer mm -hmm. you will check that pr and they view the files mm. and differentiation and you can uh, uh, merge particular branch to the main branch master branch or whatever the branch is expected yeah. so let's see your code is approved and the code is merged to the master branch and in your local your master branch is already there which is not having the latest code because you have already created the feature branch so now yeah. what you should do i should do to take the latest code from the master branch from the gate side so I uh, okay. So I particularly uh, uh, like uh, my my. If I have a different branch, my bar, my branch and master branch. So I need to uh, merge those branch. Basically, I need to take pull master into my branch first. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I can I can able to resolve the co co conflicts whatever it is. And if it, if there are mm -hmm. a conflict, then I need to again raise the PR or maybe the changes into push, and then to again mm -hmm. merge the master like this. And same, you also need to. Uh, take master into your, your current branch and merge it with you hmm. like this and then we can uh, push to the again a new PR as a master branch can you tell me what is cherry pick yeah cherry pick is uh, what i've heard uh, what i i have not used it but what i heard is the particular you have multiple uh, commits in your branch right some somewhere you are mm -hmm. uh, like ahead or back so you need to pick particular uh, like a, a, a commit or change and that you need to push your to, to branch like this so you can ignore any of the other commits just need the particular commit and then you need to cherry pick this commit like this that's how we use cherry pick but i have not used it like properly okay okay fine and uh, fine okay great so one last thing that uh, with respect to jenkins so you guys are like having the proper CI/CD pipeline integrated with the main pipeline, or you have created your own automation pipeline? Yeah, I just automation pipeline create differently. So we are using that like uh, Docker image, which is given by Selenium HQ only. So I'm using the Docker image, which is uh, like installed in the AWS machine. So there is a different machine of AWS EC2 machine for automation. Mm -hmm. So it uh, the Jenkins code written is like uh, it will. The Jenkins job is defined by some uh, consider 10 a.m. in the morning. It will uh, start the job. It will or, or like up the machine. It will take the machine to up level, and the Docker will run inside the machine, and then my code will run inside the machine like this it's a pipeline. But it is not interacted with any other pipeline. So it's just result whatever we are getting, we are putting into S3 bucket, and we're checking from mm -hmm. there only. Yes, that's all. Hmm. Okay. And how much you you are involved in the functional testing because it's not like every time you guys are doing automation so automation is definitely running some test cases but when you get a new build in your in your release cycle then uh, how much time you spend on the functional testing to test the things manually okay so i think if a new feature i think 80 percent time we use in the functional testing only mm -hmm. so the small small okay. defects uh, cycle will going on then i will be not part of it but the new feature the new sprint I'm always be a part of functional testing so 80 percent we can say okay so well, let's see if i'm giving an opportunity for this project that uh, we have to initially do a lot of manual testing make the product stable and then maybe for next three four months you are not getting automation opportunities much because application itself is listed under development and then not stable the backend is also not that stable a lot of integrations are happening and then there is a project where uh, I have two projects in my company then there's another project which is like everything is smoothly fine and then you have to start the automation from the beginning or you have to work in the existing automation framework in that project so which one your preference 
you will pick project one or project two so i uh, i will pick project one in which the things are not stable yet because i will uh, you know understand the proper functionalities of the feature so because like how to do automation is one thing but what to do automation it's a major thing i think we should understand first so when i be part of manual testing the release cycle i can understand what mm -hmm. is the pain point of the like qa team is going through so i i pick those area first so that's why that's how i understand what to automate that's why i picked first project so but for example in the first project i'm not giving you any automation work for next 6 months then what will be your approach that don't yeah, you think, think that you will say that because yeah go yeah. ahead so uh, if, yeah so even say 6 month is not a big uh, big thing because in this six month, I understand what to what I will do after six months. So I, I I have a time to think of multiple frameworks which are in market and which will be uh, uh, like you know usable to my application. So though I have a breathing time also, so I can think what to do next and how do we implement. Whether the project two has already things implemented and just need to be a uh, part of the project. So that's why I use I mm -hmm. choose project one. Okay, great. Fine, Babik. I think that's all from my side. This is what we can cover, like at almost around more than one hour. So, what do you think? Yeah. Where exactly you are lacking? Where exactly you having the strong area? Uh yeah. I think uh, I think I'm really sorry for the internet connection. I think not sure like how it is happening, but it's pretty bad. That's the reason. Yeah, we interrupted a lot. But on the things that like uh. uh I need to learn more about the deep dive things. I know things, how it's work. I already used it, but I have not covered mm -hmm. it internally. And that's the reason I'm not able to give you answer uh, much more because I have used AWS, Jenkins, everything, Docker also. But if you ask me some more questions the Docker, I'm definitely sure mm -hmm. that I would not be able to answer you. So that's the reason. Mm -hmm. I just go to the website blog and read and just implement it, but not try to learn it from the thoroughly, like internally. That is one thing I need to do and the, yeah, I think I am big in a Selenium because Selenium I use is like very generously like I want to select this, this, this and I use it. If I'm stuck somewhere, mm -hmm. I just go to Google and use it, whatever the class and all the stuff. But I would be more, you know, hands on and the understandable the Selenium features like in, in internally the classes and all the stuff that is more required. I think API part was uh, good for myself, but yeah, there's still improvement on API side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let me share my feedback. Uh, first of all, that internet issue plays major role because when you let's yeah. see tomorrow you're going for interview and then interview is already scheduled and then someone is taking your interview and already scheduled it and then if your internet is bad, you're losing the opportunity. Then again you have to reschedule it and then or maybe internet is not good. So, so, so the interviewer also will be losing the interest and they will be finishing and then you they will reject you very straightforward that okay yeah uh candidate is not great like that or internet speed so first improve the logistics that's very important thing okay now let's talk about the api part your api part is very strong because you are all actually it reflects that okay you're actually working upon it but uh, small small things you should know about what is OAuth 1.0 2.0 how exactly you're generating the token and you should feel confident about it because that's your strongest area that you are actually working on the api projects you have many automation things that you guys have done and all such things i really like the answer that that the way you handled the bdd and the cucumber separately you clearly said okay yeah the qa dev is also involved and then you're sharing the uh, feature file with them but po is not much involved because of it's very more technical feature file that you guys are writing po is more of a ui thing and then designing the business workflow over there which is like a nice answer to tackle it this is what the bd is all about that when the three me goes working together and then on top of that you're using cucumber as a separate library to automate the bdd thing and everything which is uh, which is good uh, your technical area is also good like you're converting the bozo using the builder pattern converting that uh, you know the uh, bozo to json and everything like that but try to improve uh, you know the json to bozo also serialization and deserialization both you have to explain you don't need to say it's not required but you can say that this is another approach i can use it along with the json parser okay because let's see for a small json okay yes. only five or ten attributes are there and then you can just easily convert that into a user class as a poso class and then you can match it and for complex you don't need to do that so certain things i think uh, definitely you can improve it here okay 
I think your camera is off. Yes, I think it's then, again the uh, lagging. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you are mentioning about your API 80% UI 30%. So why 20% is missing in API? Because API can be automated definitely 90, 100% also because APIs are very straightforward. Hit the API, get the response. So you should justify that answer that why 20% things are missing like that, right? So either you say, okay, yeah, we have almost automated almost scenarios with respect to because people are expecting with respect to AT uh, because I don't know do what check the manual testing with respect to API again and again. That's a pain point for UI point of view. We definitely understand 30 40% coverage is good to go. And still you can say that you can handle this question that yeah, still we are improving. We are trying to focus on the UI also because API is almost covered from our side and we are just in the maintenance mode of the API because all Almost everything is automated with respect to API thing. You can say most of the things are automated. Five ten percent is missing because of some third party integration or maybe some third party tool that we are using, which cannot be automated, and we have some limitations. So that you have to handle this thing, right? Your answer was good. That, uh, but please add some more focus on the schema validation because that is your strongest area in API. And if you're missing okay. the don't let the interview remind you that oh, what about a schema validation that should come from your side that no schema validation is important and then try to learn about monolithic and microservices things as well because don't expect only about because you are applying with nine years or ten years seven plus years right with principle instead so yes. people will expect certain things the design questions also advantage with monolithic advantage with microservices right such things so what are different tools and technologies are available to automate a uh, microservices like fact is there or protobuf is there and then how will you in the rest of short also you can write the rest line to automate your microservices like that so overall this is the uh, i would say eight out of ten i will give you for api these small small thing you just try to improve like you should know about auth 1.0 2.0 you should never say that Somehow we are get, uh, generating the key or token, right? So you should justify that what exactly in my system, in my project, which architecture, which authentication token, how exactly we are generating on the basis of secret ID, secret token and everything. What is authorization server and all such things with respect to 2.0? Just read about it. It's very straightforward because definitely with your profile, people will ask these kind of questions about authentication, okay. schema. Validation. These are the standard things people will ask. Like that your logic your fundamentals are really good. I really like the way you handle post versus put it was a very good answer that was really good and then you also give that uh, you are not going to check each and every field in the JSON object when you are getting a bulky JSON object only the required thing and then uh, you will decide which are the mandatory uh, field that you have to verify. I think that was a really nice answer nicely. It shows that okay. Yeah, you have worked upon real time projects. So overall with respect to uh, API side, which is good and then try to some more add text tech. Someone is asking about in your framework. What is a text tech? So just try to enhance the answer. We are using Maven as a build automation tool. Cucumber for the BDD point of view. JUnit for to writing the test cases and the assertions. Java is a programming language. Rest the short is an external library like that. So just categorize the text tech like that. Google JSON, you should not think about okay, no, which API because it's a very common thing that you are using on a daily basis, right? Yeah. You, you might be using object mapper from the Jackson API or Google JSON API. So it should be on your fingertips. You should not recall during the interview because that's a thing that you are doing on a daily basis, right? Right. Okay. And then the schema validation piece at this point, you have to improve that. And then you can say, yeah, Cucumber report, we are using it and we are not using any external report like that. You already handled very well. Extend report or LA or report you are not using it and then builder design pattern also you are using which is like a very good thing uh, You know like setting the object through the constructor and then setter that you are using and then Getting the value using the getter at the runtime. This is what it shows that you have worked with the practical exposure practical things So I really like this overall approach with you. That's very nice to do that now I Give you one scenario that crud operation you handle it very well but uh, please improve your response code. Right? What is the meaning of 401, 404, 500, 503? Exact definition. What is the meaning of that? So you are applying as an experienced guy in API automation, API testing. So you should know about all these things. So please just 
try to remember that what is the purpose of 503 500 200 family 300 family 400 500 family it should be on your fingertips right if you're checking the error code then you should know about the status code as well in that case okay just like try to do that uh your answer was good with respect to this elastic search but i was expecting more about the graphql you just have some basic idea about graphql apis as well synchronize asynchronize apis and all such things that will enhance your uh, answers and uh, your knowledge for sure hmm? now come to selenium part in selenium your logic is good i really like that we you created a for loop and putting the condition and clicking on india and then breaking the loop okay this is the standard way but there are other ways also try to find out maybe in selenium you are not regularly using it that's why you are missing that touch but overall your logics are good the way you are writing the code you know how to create a list and everything but there are some other things as well because if someone is taking your interview in selenium they are already using it those things so they are expecting the same thing from you as well tell me the alternatives that is what in selenium in ui automation there are multiple alternatives you should know about two to three alternatives for example i give you india you can directly create an xpath path and click on it like this your web table logic was good Correct. but don't take much amount of time you should be crisp and clear that yeah this is what i'm going to do that and this is what uh, you know this is the logic if as logic for loop pagination then done okay and then please improve your proceedings following sibling relative locators these are the things your logic was good if i give you one hour definitely you will be writing the logic but it should be reflected you know at a time of interview nobody is sharing the eclipse with you and you have to write the exact code you have to write the pseudo code or the exact to the point answer just give it and finish the answer and jump to the next question that plays a very important role in interview because let them ask more and more so they are not going to you know sit with you for four to five hours to ask the questions they will be having a maximum 45 minutes or one hour or it depends if you're really giving a lot of good uh, answers and then you both are having i mean good frequency match between interviewer and interview and the candidate then they might extend 10 15 minutes as well just to check your knowledge but don't give uh, less time to the interviewer so that they really wanted to ask 10 questions but they're just limited to five questions only or six questions so that is also an art in interview right to yes. the point chris went clear and then jump to the next question quickly like that right but to the point answer your java knowledge is good i would say but still like you know you should understand the basic stuff with respect to interfaces abstract classes and uh, mutables a string constant pool is the area name yeah right so SCP. about the mapping and then also thing exactly so after jdk 1.8 what happened you have to enhance your answers i'm not saying your answers were wrong but you have to enhance your answers so it like if i ask you okay fine abstract class object you are thinking um can we can we not so it's like okay you are yeah. just you know, it's a fluke so don't show that okay although you know it right but you should know all these basic things and it should come immediately your answer was nice good like a static method can we overwrite no we cannot overwrite we can overload but we cannot overwrite how can you override the static method uh, right because it's uh, never be part of the yes. object common memory allocations a meta space permanent generation just hardly it will take one or two chapters to go through it and then you can just do that overall string immutable you were good finally keyword final keyword you were good example also was good now in selenium once again please try to learn these things these are very hot topic these days in selenium svg shadow dom and canvas for svg okay. can we create the xpath shadow dom what is the query selector css selector that we have to use can we use the xpath with shadow dom no can we use the the what is the specialty svg xpath that we have to use the normal xpath will not work with the svg element although it's not the regular thing that you are but what if you're joining a company they are using a lot of svg so they will expect certain things right. if you are you know claiming that okay yeah i'm good in selenium so just improve that thing as well your git was good sure. the pr process cherry pick answer was also nice and then uh, okay but i would advise you one thing you use a lot of this word uh i heard about it i heard about it i heard about it you say this thing the moment yeah. someone is asking some out box question for example cherry big uh, i heard about it no although you heard about it but at a time of interview simple say i've worked upon it yeah i've used it something like this so 
or you don't say such things don't say that okay i heard about it it reflects that okay you don't have experience on that thing but somewhere you have heard about it that's why you're giving the answer but other candidate actually heard about it used it and then giving the answer so that the weightage for you will be less as compared to other candidates so this is a very minute thing that i think uh, i observed that uh, let's see for git pr or git uh, cherry pick you know the answer if you know the answer don't say heard about it if you're totally new let's say for graphql or something that you have never used it but somewhere some blogs you have seen of some poc that you have done you can say that yeah i use somewhere i use in my previous project not in the current project like that you can say that if you have never worked upon it you can simply say i was using in my previous projects but in the current project maybe i'm we are not using this concept so just handle it like this instead of saying i heard about it somewhere okay because see for if i'm asking 10 20 questions for most of the questions if you're saying i heard about it then again it's somewhere i'm like confused that okay this person has only heard about it or practically used it or not you're getting a point okay so yeah, correct, this correct. Is a story. i really like the answer for the project the one. one in the project you you pick the project one that is a that was a very impressive and a good answer which is like absolutely fine but uh first you more about that what kind of project it is you can cross question also one or two quest questions like that i think otherwise uh, it looks good to me the only reason is behind it is like when interviewer will ask a deep dive question that it will be difficult for me to answer that's the reason i'm just mm -hmm. telling the that sentence but yeah i think that we should not think of it if, if, if interview asking a more question on the particular topic then we can tell him that i didn't work on it but uh, i have experience is like like this so i'll improve See, it yeah. there is a, i totally understand that but there is a you know so it's too much heard about it then it might be a negative point if someone is right. deep diving into that thing you can say maybe i haven't seen that or maybe i haven't uh, worked upon it that is the right thing but if someone is asking these are very common things for example yeah svg if you say you know i heard about it then again the shadow dom i heard about it then again cherry pick i heard about it so Hmm. don't yeah. use this word too much like that is what i'm saying maybe you can say i have uh, seen this but just improve that thing right and then please with selenium make sure you are up to date with the selenium 4 features as well like relative locators you were talking about uh, you did not mention about cdp the chrome dev protocols that you were saying okay we can do through the buff suit you can uh, capture the network calls and everything but now this is feature is actually available with the help of cdp you can do that in selenium 4 W3C compliance, W3C web driver, yes. uh, instead of JSON via yes. protocol, we are using it. So just try to improve that part. Overall, Bhavik, it's you are a very strong candidate in, in API, and your knowledge is really good. In fact, in Selenium also, you handle the scenario very well, the code wise and everything. You are not doing the silly mistakes, but uh, uh, but try to be you know quick about the answer with respect to if someone is asking the question. Just try to be quick about it. Don't stretch too much. Otherwise, it uh, looks uh, good to me. Some little bit of uh, practice, and on the uh, you know on these areas, I think then you are good to go. And another thing is one small thing that I would like to mention that when I ask about the current roles and responsibilities, just more be specific about it. What exactly you are doing? You are responsible. You showcase that yeah, this is what I'm doing. I really impressed with your answer that you said that the, there was no QA process were there and then I tried to implement that's why you justified your principal estate position very well that is very impressive that I really like the that because you started and all such things and then the you started the automation practices and all such things but you can expect although I did not ask this question that what are the challenges that you faced on the management side to implement the automation process first time in your company so just be ready for, for those level of questions as well at a time of interview okay okay good anything else yeah yeah i think uh two things from my side like first thank you so much for like you know letting me getting me experience of interview which is really helpful and the points you mentioned is amazing i will definitely work on it and second thing is thank you so much again for the content you create i think i have uh, gone through a lot of videos of yours and that's why i'm learning a lot so i'll definitely uh, try to learn more on those topics and will improve on the certain areas for sure okay great 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 Bhavik. you are a very good candidate i really liked your overall skills 
best of luck let me know if you have any issues and um, yeah sure sure go. okay then shallow then i'll see you then thank you so yeah thank you so much navin bye 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 happy new year bye bye